Hello and welcome to the Devon Man Shed. Now I made a diorama for the first time a couple of kits ago and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed doing it and I couldn't wait to do another one so uh, I decided to have a look online regarding buying another tank kit and I decided to build this instead. This is what's more commonly known as a German half track. This is a 135th scale Tamiya product. It was fairly cheap because it's an old kit and uh, while I was on this particular website I came across these kits here for these guns and this is something else I've never made as well uh, this particular one here um, I saw first and I thought well that would be ideal but then I, I came across this one here as well and uh, I've decided to actually build this one I don't know what I'm going to do with it regarding the diorama. I don't know whether I'm going to um, show it actually attached to the half track being towed or unattached set up to uh, start firing that aircraft because it's an anti aircraft gun. But uh, that's what I've decided to do. I've decided to use this particular kit here and the uh, German half track. So that one there will come in handy for uh, a future project. Now, along with the um, kits I've actually splashed out on these filet or bottle paints. I have uh, quite a large selection of paints but they're all geared to sort of um, aircraft and uh, military vehicles uh, they use a different colour with them. So rather than buy individual bottles and because I was buying online I decided to uh, buy this. Um, these are quite good. Vallejo do quite a lot of these um, paint um, uh, boxes. I suppose you could call them um, a starter paint kit I suppose in a way. They give you the main uh, bottles in the actual uh, box here and they give you a nice glossy leaflet sometimes which it comes in handy as well. So uh, that's what I've ended up uh, buying to uh, do this diorama. So uh, I hope to uh, try not to go into too much detail because I need to uh, make this video about an hour long and I've obviously got uh, two kits plus a diorama to build so um, I shall cut this short uh, in the next clip I shall go through what's in the boxes and then we'll uh, progress from there so um, I'll see you then right let's take a ganders in the box Right, instructions, they're always handy to have. Um, this is a very old kit, this. I think this is dating from the 1970s. Um, we're in the same era as that Churchill tank I'd done. And these instructions, um, the, the layout of them um, is completely different to uh, modern day Tamiya instructions. First thing I went to do was to look at the paint codes and normally they have a list of paint codes and uh, they don't seem to have it on here. They've just got a, a couple of paragraphs informing you of uh, the various colour schemes. Uh, they're not relating to the Tamiya paints so it's a possibility that these Tamiya paints that are available nowadays or um, weren't available then I don't know. Seems rather strange. It's got painting and applying details. Um, other than that, um, it's pretty straightforward by the looks of it. Technical tips, that's always handy for beginners and things. Now we've got uh, one, two, three. We've got three sprues plus the base, which is separate. That's unusual. We've got the tracks in there that are loose. Well, they were loose in the Churchill build. So we've got the uh, main body there. Um, yeah, there's a, um, a quite a bit of detail regarding wheels with this, obviously. But um, other than that, um, we've got some figures with it, which is a nice bonus. So uh, there we are. That's what we've got. 
No, I always uh, relate the price back just to give people an idea how much this hobby can be. Um, this um, kit and these two gun kits I had delivered for £26.50. Now um, that that's a bargain in my in my books. It's uh, it's a really good price. Um, I think these were about um, seven quid. It might have even just been six. So uh, this here was about twelve fifty, something like that. It's an old kit. That's probably why it's cheap. But I feel confident with it because it's obviously Tamiya. Um, and me paints here. Um, these are about nineteen quid, but with the postage. You're talking about 20, just over 23 quid from Amazon for these. Um, as much as I'd like to su support my local model shop, he does supply a Vallejo paints, but unfortunately he doesn't keep the, the full range, and um, it's the, it's a damn sight more convenient and cheaper for me to uh, buy half a dozen pots at a time to warrant the uh, postage. Um, yeah right there you go right see you in the build right I'll just go through with you what I've done so far this is the main bulkhead with all the little small pieces of detail that had to be glued together this all went together really well didn't have any issues with that at all This floor was okay. Uh, these seats were a bit of a pain trying to keep them level while they glued because they just rested on uh, location points. But uh, I managed to sort of prop something underneath them to keep them from sort of leaning over. Uh, the rest of it here was okay. I didn't have any issues with that whatsoever. Now this bit here this this uh, component here lays across the axles because you're not supposed to glue the axles so this basically located and um, fixed the axles in place now I had a bit of a problem with this it wouldn't lay flat so I ended up having to put a clamp on one end it seemed to sit okay here but it was kicking up on here so I placed a clamp on it um, it seemed to be successful and then we came to the floor now this is where it was all a bit vague because um, you can't see here but underneath the floor there are a couple of axle locations that go over the front um, axles here and that location there governs where it's supposed to sit and uh, I had a hell of a game trying to um, place this inside this tub you can't see if it's locating over the axle properly and what I had to do was just locate it in place and then just pull on these axles to make sure that they don't pull out and uh, if they didn't pull out I was confident that they'd be in the right place now with this here, I again had to use a clamp because uh, I located it on the front here and it was kicking up and I wasn't sure exactly where it's supposed to be sitting here. Um, there is a bit of a ledge. Whether that's supposed to be there, I don't know. I feel confident that it's been glued in the right place. But that was a bit of a pain, that. So, that's as far as we got. And here we are, here it is with that part finished. Now, what I really should have done really was um, to have sprayed that floor while it was out. It would have made the uh, painting a lot easier, but uh, what I intend to do now is actually spray this. I'm gonna give it a coat of primer and I'm gonna spray the inside. And uh, what I'll do is I'll mask that off when I do the outside of the uh, of the tub along with the top part that goes on top so uh, 
that's what I intend to do now. So I'm going to set me um, spray booth up and give that uh, a spray of um, primer. And I shall probably spray it Panzer Grey. And then do some um, weathering inside, particularly on the floor there. So uh, that's my next little uh, job to do. So um, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so this stage here, we've got the front tyres and the front subframe assembly here. And uh, this, this required a, a little bit of um, delicate assembly. You could, if you wanted to, leave the actual wheels uh, so that they could swivel, but I've actually glued mine. I can't recall any problems with this it's a while ago I've done it I've been rather busy and uh, it's been like over a week and a half now since I've done the last part but uh, I've managed to crack on with it today now um, the main thing that took the time were these wheels I had to make sure that these were all lined up and uh, there was a quite a bit of flash on these axles and I removed it and I think I should have really left that flash on there because it would have helped retain these wheels they were all a bit sloppy going on there and trying to um, glue someone in position when they're uh, a sloppy fit can be a bit uh, 
bit daunting so um, I took my time over it and I'm happy to say that these have all been um, glued now and uh, are looking as if they're in line what they're supposed to be uh, the sub assembly on the front here this this um, front wheel section here that's been uh, glued to the tub I've got a tow hook here and a couple of little bits and pieces of um, detail that needed to uh, be glued to it now this rear door thing here I wanted to make it so that it would be open unfortunately one of these here hinges just broke in half while I was manhandling it and I had no choice but to actually do away with these hinges and glue the doors directly to the tub so uh, they're flush fitting now um, which is a shame I could have done with them open but uh, it was a problem I came across and I managed to address it the hinges you're not going to be able to see so it doesn't matter that they've been um, uh, they're, they're now obsolete uh, what else have I done ah yes the top part I've uh, glued to the bottom part uh, I've done the front panel here as well and obviously I've glued the two doors on this was a lovely fit this I never had any trouble with it whatsoever and I'm pleased to say that after it glued there was hardly any glue sort of um, uh, showing on the seam so I'm quite glad about that because I didn't really want to rub, rub that area down because of the rivets so that's uh, been quite successful that so apart from those doors, it's been okay. Um, what I have done also is that uh, in my previous clip you saw me weathering it with some brown weathering powders. I've actually gone and uh, pr progressed a little further with the inside and um, used some grey powders. And I think it looks a bit better now. It looked a bit bland before. So uh, that hasn't been sealed yet. I weathered it previously and uh, put a, a matte coat over it but I've decided to leave it and I shall matte coat that when I do the uh, do the main paint so this is where we are with it uh, as you can see I ha I've yet to uh, prime the front subframe and wheels here and the front panel uh, I I wanted to um, spray the bottom half behind the wheels because I could see it being a bit of a problem so the, the actual wheels and the lower tub was sprayed uh, with that Panzer Grey so uh, what I'm going to have to do next is um, put the added, added detail on the upper part and then I shall be spraying it uh, with the Panzer Grey and I shall spray it, spray it all over give it another coat all over now you'll see I've got cotton wool in there, that's something I use as a masking medium and I find it works really well so uh, I won't get any overspray on the inside of that so uh, that's where we are um, the next stage of the build is the actual uh, what I call mud guards I suppose that go there, I've got those to glue on I'm going to do the tracks, I shall weather those off the actual model, glue them and then uh, I shall weather them um, a bit more once they've uh, been fitted. So it's a, it's a case of uh, fitting those mud guards now. And here's the other little bits and pieces here, all these little bits of detail. So that's the reason why I haven't bothered spraying the Panzer Grey yet. I'll do it all at once. Got some guns here I need to... Uh, assemble as well so that's uh, what I'm going to do on the next bit so uh, I'll see you then right well carrying on from our previous build what I've actually done here is I've added all the details to the uh, mud guard and that took a bit of time because I had to glue those leave it overnight for them to dry and then uh, following evening I had to glue the actual mud guard um, to the to the body so it's taken a bit of time but uh, 
trying to uh, rush these things while things are gluing you end up going around in circles uh, same this side here just the uh, opposite to what that one is really there's a couple of little bits of detail that's needed to add um, particularly down here we've got the um, mirrors uh, we've got the um, windows here that had to be glued on the side uh, whatever these are, I've no idea what these are, and uh, I've glued the supports for the guns. I haven't actually glued the guns on the supports yet, because being a, a bit of a frail item, I'm going to leave that till I've um, finished the model. And we've now gone on to the actual figures. So I'm in the process of uh, gluing those. I've done three. I've got, uh, I think, another two or three to do. Can't remember. Anyway, so uh, obviously we're at the stage now where we can uh, put the tracks on because the tracks were actually uh, supposed to have gone on earlier in the build. Um, yeah, down here. And I left them off for a reason. So... Uh, what I'm going to do now I'm going to uh, blanket spray this with the Panzer Grey and um, once that's done I will uh, prime properly spray the tracks black add a bit of dry brushing using a silver and then probably uh, give them a a brown weathering effect I will then glue them to the actual model and then I can then sort of add some uh, weathering detail if I want to afterwards so the uh, the tracks are going to be left off until I've actually sprayed this so I've got to go off now and uh, prime the top part of the uh, vehicle and uh, the subframe on the front and obviously all the little bits and pieces of the mud guards and that but uh, once that's done uh, it'll be uh, just blanket sprayed and then I'll come back on camera and explain what I'm going to do next so uh, I shall go off and do that uh, in the meantime um, I'm building the uh, anti-aircraft gun uh, but that will be in another clip so uh, I've got plenty going on here at the moment so I'll see you uh, when I've sprayed this right so here we are I've progressed quite a lot actually um, now let's just think where we were now previously we had uh, some mouldings that weren't uh, primed or sprayed with Panzer Grey the top half of the tub here and uh, the front uh, subframe assembly so I've gone ahead and blanket sprayed that with the Panzer Grey uh, I let that dry I then done some detailing once that had dried uh, such as the uh, shovels and the hammer here there's a lump hammer there and um, uh, whatever that is I don't know what that is but it had to be painted red um, yeah the other parts are on this side here uh, the shovels and that so once that was done I then blanket sprayed it with a gloss coat once that was dry I then applied the de uh, decals and they went on really well I was well chuffed with the way they went on I never had any issues any breakages and um, seemed to go where they're supposed to so once that was done I then uh, weathered it now the first thing I've done was I used um, a brown wash a dark brown wash I don't buy washes because they're a rip off because all they are are watered down paint so all I've used here is uh, a dark brown for me Vallejo model air range um, probably thinned it down 80% with, with water and uh, what I've done there I've just dipped uh, a wide soft bristle brush into that and just uh, just wiped it all over and just let it uh, run into the uh, bits of detail 
and once that was dry I then had to uh, do some weathering regarding powders and I used a brown and a grey on it now these weathering powders are something that I've um, made myself through buying artist pastels so I don't buy uh, weathering powders because again they're a rip off um, if you have a look at me other video regarding the Churchill tank I go into detail there how I go about um, buying these pastels and what I do to them so once that was done uh, it was a case of sealing it all so I then sealed it with a um, matte coat and prior to the matte coat going on it looked a lot better than this actually um, I was quite uh, impressed by the way that it, uh, it weathered <clears throat> but as soon as I sprayed that matte uh, coat on there it sort of um, bleached it out a little bit so uh, it uh, it's now sealed anyway now the tracks have been put on I've just sprayed those uh, with a primer give them a spray with a dark brown put some weathering powders over them and uh, basically that's it I'm not all that keen on the way they go together they clip together they're a bit uh, willy nilly but I've got the uh, joins at the bottom so that when it goes on the diorama you can't see it and I think that's about it as you can see I've removed my cotton wool I've got some bits of cotton wool here left I've just got to scrape off and uh, so that that uh, served really well and I've um, put a matte coat of uh, varnish in there as well uh, so, yeah, so there we are it uh, it's turned out okay actually all right um, I'm gonna have to hold my hand up though because I've made a bit of a cock up when I stuck these mud guards on there was two location points there and when I located them into those points um, I looked along the mud guard and there was no gap whatsoever and I thought oh right lovely nice fit so I glued them in that position when I went to do the detailing on the uh, shovels and uh, the wheels here as well I noticed that the wheels were very close to the mud guard uh, so it seems like uh, I've glued these mud guards in the wrong place um, it looks like I should have um, sort of um, sprung this mud guard up over this bit here uh, it's in the instructions why it never flagged up with me I don't know but like I say I, I placed the mud guard on there using the two reference points there and uh, there wasn't any um, fit issue so uh, I glued it so the front mud guards unfortunately are, are too low on it but it's just one of them things um, I could have kept quiet about it but I've been and told you uh, my mistake we're all human uh, it's pissed me off a little bit because uh, other than that this has been a nice build but uh, there we go whenever I build a kit I always try to think that uh, the next kit's going to be better than the other and it doesn't always work out that way so that's my fault um, <clears throat> uh, it is noticeable uh, probably now I've told you but uh, there ain't a lot I can do about it so uh, oh yeah the other thing the, the mirrors here I knew exactly what was going to happen with these mirrors they were going to snap off and sure enough they have uh, one snapped off so I cut the other one off and I had two bits of detail either side here those there broke off as well so <laughs> Um, these things happen I don't get anal about it I'm gonna lose any sleep over it it's it, it's um, it's been enjoyable so far so uh, I ain't bothered about these little details uh, being broken uh, so where are we now we need to uh, obviously add the guns those I'm gonna add later on because they're likely to be broken so I should probably put those on just as it's about to be uh, glued to the diorama um, yeah that's it so I need to now crack on and um, finish off that uh, anti-aircraft gun and do the same sort of weathering on that so uh, I'll see you in the next clip
Okay, so at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I bought two kits along with the half track, and uh, when I received it, I uh, had second thoughts about actually building both. So it was a case of uh, choosing which which kit to use to go along with this diorama and half track, and I've decided to uh, leave this kit and use it on a future diorama. So this one here, I ain't going to bother with. And this is the one I'm going to put together. This is actually on a trailer. Um, I'm not too sure yet what I plan to do with the diorama. I don't know whether I'm going to depict it with the trailer and the gun placement um, being towed by the half track or having it unattached on the diorama. I really don't know yet. But uh, what I intend to do here is um, build this off camera. I shall probably do a couple of clips of its, its progress but I won't be going into too great a detail because I want this video fairly short. So we've got about three sprues here. Um, it's going to be time consuming because these are very small parts and it's a case of uh, gluing so many, leave it overnight, come back and uh, glue some more. Otherwise you're chasing yourself around in circles. So uh, it won't be... Um, it won't take as long as the half track, no doubt, but uh, it's going to take long enough. I'm going to show you clips um, of the build. I ain't going to go into a great deal of detail because I want to try and save a bit of time. But as you can see here, it's, uh, there's a lot of small parts going to be glued. And of course I've got to paint it and I've got to weather it. So uh, that's going to take uh, take a bit of time now. So what I shall do, I shall uh, focus on building that. Uh, show you a few clips of it going together, and then uh, I shall show you the finished item with it sprayed and weathered. I think, and uh, then we can crack on with the uh, actual diorama. So uh, until then. I'll crack on and I'll see you in the next clip. Right, I've cracked on with this anti-aircraft gun. And as I said to you before, I've never built anything like this before. But I'll tell you what, what a lovely little uh, kit to put together. Everything fitted perfect. I had no issues with anything. Apart from the fact that I uh, went to remove a bit of sprue off this here. And it broke in half. But fortunately, I've got round it. But yeah, went together really, really well. Um, it looks pretty complicated, but um, when you break it down, it's pretty straightforward. The only problem I've got with this is a lot of small parts, and obviously you have to, well, you can only glue so many, and then you need to walk away and leave it to dry overnight, so that you can crack on and um, glue some more parts the following day. So uh, yeah, really nice little kit. Now I'm at the stage now where I'm at stage six here. Um, I've actually built the trailer and I've built probably 90% of the gun. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna uh, go and put together this uh, base that this actual gun sits on. Uh, which then goes onto the trailer. So uh, that's my next step. And once I've done that, I will uh, obviously give it a coat of primer and a coat of Panzer Grey, the same as the um, half track. And then I think we'll come back then and uh, decide what sort of weathering I, I need to do on it. So um, that's where we are with that. So uh, I'll see you in the next uh, instalment. Right, this is the actual gun finished now and I've um, sprayed it with a Panzer Grey. I've given it a brown wash and then I've given it some uh, weathering powders regarding uh, uh, browns and a grey. So this now isn't far off being weathered very similar to the uh, half track. It went together really well this, I quite enjoyed that. 
Now uh, my next step now is obviously to uh, start to knock up the uh, base, the wooden base for the diorama. Um, that's something I'm going to go and do right now. There are a couple of other things I need to uh, finish. I'm sort of getting myself through the assembly and painting of the figures. And I've still got those guns to attach to the half track. So uh, I've got a few little jobs to do, but uh, my main one now is to get this diorama um, glued up and get some polystyrene down and then sort of uh, try and work out what sort of scenery I'm going to uh, uh, sort of generate. So uh, until then, uh, I'll see you in the next clip. Right, so I've knocked up this base. It's a 13 by 9 I've laid a bit of half inch polystyrene in the base of it. I'll put the half tracking gun on the uh, base here to get the idea what sort of width we're talking for a track. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to depict the actual half track towing the gun. But I shall depict in it uh, stationary with the figures. So I've then sort of uh, added some more bits of polystyrene here and just uh, roughly uh, got a knife and just um, uh, ran a knife over it uh, to get rid of the smoothness. Um, this here will probably be um, added with some um, ballast so I'm not too bothered about this being smooth at the moment. And uh, the next stage is to um, mix up my plaster of Paris and uh, lay over it. Now I'm going to mix up 250 grams of plaster of Paris and uh, 0.2 of a litre of water. I'm going to uh, gradually add the powder to the water um, so that it doesn't go off too quick. Uh, the less stirring you do, the more time you got. So uh, that's my next stage, uh, is the plaster of Paris. I've um, I've got it here. This is uh, this is being sold as fine casting powder, but it was actually uh, being sold on Amazon as plaster of Paris. So uh, um, no doubt it's this ordinary plaster of Paris, and um, somebody stuck their uh, business label on it, I suppose. Um, so I'm going to go off and do that and lay the uh, lay the stuff into the base. Now once that is um, set. I will get my jigsaw and uh, remove whatever's left of the wood showing because ideally this front piece here could do with being flush and uh, I want to take this down as well at an angle so uh, the last one I made I just ran my jigsaw up there just to get rid of the uh, majority of the wood so in the next clip it'll be uh, covered in plaster of Paris and trimmed down and uh, we'll take it from there so I'll see you then. Okay, so the plaster of Paris has been poured over the surface here. I've manipulated it with a rather large brush and uh, I've then sort of soaked the brush in water and sort of gone over it to uh, smooth it out a little bit. As you can see here where I've scalloped the uh, side pieces out. I've run the jigsaw round to get rid of the uh, majority of it and uh, then I've given it a coat of paint because so I found that um, there was a very thin film on top of the uh, plaster of Paris it didn't seem to be drying plus the fact that it's obviously porous so I've uh, given it a coat of paint so now it's a case of really now detailing it in regards um, putting ballast down in the tracks here and laying down I'm under the assumption grass probably round here um, I've got a I've got an idea of what to add to this bit of area um, whether I'll end up doing it I don't know um, but other than that uh, basically that's where we are with it so I'm going to go off camera and um, apply the ballast to the tracks here um, and then I shall probably do some grass work uh, around the other areas as well. So um, I'll see you when I get back in the next clip. 
Okay, so I progressed quite a lot since the last clip. I was hoping to uh, do two or three sort of sections of uh, building this up, but unfortunately I got carried away. Uh, it's happened to me before, and uh, I sometimes forget all about the camera. But basically what I've done, I've uh, laid some PVA tap water and soap liquid mix down into the tracks here so that I could lay some ballast over the top of it. I used a, a brush, I just brushed it on and I laid this uh, three mil media down and then on top of that I used the finer media here that uh, represents mud and uh, I added this to the edges of the track as well but once it was dry I actually uh, painted the inside tracks with a dark brown so there's a, a slight shade difference between them now the grass I don't have a, um, a proper applicator for it so all I've done is laid this down by hand and uh, sprayed it again with a 50, 50 PVA mix um, I've added these things here which are actually matchsticks to represent a fence that's uh, or the fence post um, I've got some bushes here that I've added and uh, all in all the grass went down as it should. I've done a bit of um, airbrushing with a brown just to make this a bit patchy. Uh, obviously this is uh, it's in better order than the other grass because it's not um, obviously been trodden on. Um, and the figures have been painted. And I had a bit of a problem with them because they needed to be painted field grey and uh, I never had a field grey. Uh, it's very rare that I find I'm going to colour for something so I had to guess it. So I used a, uh, a grey and a black and uh, I mixed it until I was happy that I got with it. I had put a brown wash over these to calm them down as well. Um, and all in all they went together quite well. So uh, I'll introduce the uh, half track and anti-aircraft gun now I think that's landed exactly where I want it to be yeah there we go folks uh, this figure broke literally minutes before I was due to do this clip and I've had to, to uh, super glue it to the half track again and uh, I've used uh, um, an accelerator on the super glue and it's gone a little bit grey there but I shall uh, get a bit of brown paint and just um, hide that. Um, so here we are. Um, we've got two figures uh, inside the um, aft track here. Uh, I've copied um, what they suggested in the plan. Um, I'm assuming that they've uh, they've come to a stop because they've come across the opposition and uh, they're uh, they've got out to investigate. Um, yeah, and and that's it really. Um, there ain't a lot more I can say about it. Um, it was thoroughly enjoyable to do. Bloody time consuming though, because obviously there's uh, two kits there and a, and a diorama to, to build. And um, it took some time. But uh, I'm glad it's done there, because I thoroughly enjoyed that. Each uh, Well, this is the second diorama I've done, and I'm learning by it each time and uh, I'm seriously thinking about the next plane build of uh, probably doing a diorama with the plane I don't know yet anyway thanks for watching um, hope it uh, has passed on some information for you I mean I'm no know-all when it comes to this uh, but um, I do like to pass on tips particularly tips that save your money uh, one thing I would like to say is that this media I've been using here has come from my garden and uh, I think what I'll do is I'll make a, a, a little short video showing how I go about um, generating this bus because um, to buy it it uh, can be expensive so I shall probably uh, put that on my list as things to do so in the meantime again thanks for watching and um, I'll see you soon.